This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. Welcome, everyone. This is episode five of Too Old Too Game. I am your fear-filled host, David Oster. I'm joined by the original man-child, Ricky Widmer. What's up, what's up, guys? I love how it's fear, fear-filled fear host. I'm being honest Not with the people. Not fearless, it's nope. fear-filled. I'm the opposite of fearless. <laughs> I am terrified. <laughs> But you know what? We're doing this, and we're doing it for you guys. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit of Battle for Azeroth. Uh, oh, yeah. World of Warcraft. Oh, you may yeah. or may not have heard about it if you play video games. Well, it's good. Mark's not here. We can kind of nerd out about the World of Warcraft and not have Mark just sit here lost in his own little world. Uh, he could do his own thing. I, I, we're going to convince <laughs> him to join. The man has no time already, but I want him to play World of Warcraft on top we gotta of it. we got to get everyone from MVP. we got to get our guild Mashed Potatoes, Dave. Mashed Potatoes needs to make a Mashed Potatoes. Uh, but we are also going to talk a little bit of maybe about the Oculus and mm-hmm. then maybe a little bit about Microsoft maybe having a streaming service that may be happening or not. You know, just a couple maybes in there. Keep <laughs> you keep guys maybes. on your toes. Uh, but before we get too into things with World of Warcraft, uh, I do want to give a quick run through of how you can support us if you want to support us. Uh, of course, you can hit that sub button down below. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can go out to iTunes if you listen to us there. Give us a five-star review there. You can give any of our shows five-star reviews. We'll take the reviews. We'll read them. We'll overanalyze them. Uh, You can also support us by going to our website. We have a ton of info out there, articles, videos, all that good stuff, even even terrible profiles. I was going to say, they could even see Model Dave on the website. Model Dave, repping the merch shirt. (laughs) Um, I'm not wearing it this week. I'll wear it next week. I'll make a note to wear it next Mm -hmm. week, but you guys could also get one. And then if you want to be above and beyond, you can go on Patreon. You can support us. Give us that uh, dollar dollar bill. And if you hit that $10 tier, you can be on a show, this show even. You could be the first on the show. You could be the first on the show. We have not had a patron I'm just pandering for someone to come on the show. I think I've realized that. The only podcasts that have not had a patron are Rick and Johnny and Too Old the Game. So you could be the first. We need we need some nerd love on this you channel. Be the first, man. Well, yeah. we're growing it. We're growing our nerdum. We're yeah. usually we started out sports. Now we're kind of we're growing we're, this we're nerd cracking that category shell. too because we're, ner- we're nerds who like sports. <sighs> that we are. <laughs> that we are. If you couldn't tell, we're not exactly the most athletically gifted. If I hear too many times how I have not been on a football field and don't play basketball, Dave. I would be rich if I had a nickel for every time. A nickel time every time? That. Fair Even a enough. penny for every time, I'd still be a millionaire. I feel like it would add up. Yeah, it definitely would. But we're not here to talk about how no. unathletic we are. No. We're here to talk about- You can about, see that clearly. We're here to talk about World of Warcraft. Uh, just for a little bit of background, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to hit the BFA, but just so you guys understand- <laughs> The BFA. The BFA. Uh, just so you understand, <laughs> we got we, we are a little bit uh, interested in this game. I, a in lot childhood, bit interested in this game. Basically, we, we lost some years to this game. Uh, me- A uh, decade to this game. I didn't- uh, Yeah. I mean, literally since- uh, You know what? Not yeah. a decade. A decade would be now. Yeah, because it's no, it's like it's been out fourteen years. Yeah, but we didn't start. I until started like, in vanilla at the end of vanilla. Yeah, I. So what? We did like take time 05? off. Yeah, we like, took time off. Oh five to fifteen. So I would say almost a decade. Yeah. So played a lot. Uh, we love the game. We absolutely love the community. Mm-hmm. It is the most unique thing. There's been you know five hundred WoW killers, and not once has anything come close to touching World of Warcraft. No. So we're going in this with the enthusiasm mm-hmm. high. The fandom high and the nostalgia goggles on, just so you are aware. I strapped Crack him on. Crack them on. I strapped him on. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, them from Gnome Ragan themselves, so we know they're good. Perfect. So, Battle for Azeroth <laughs> is dropping August 14th, worldwide launch, same exact time. It's about two weeks, three It weeks. is a crazy thing that we're actually doing this worldwide launch. Uh-huh. Um, I, expect, I expect Blizzard servers to shit a brick. Uh, <laughs> But going up to this point, you know, they they did their 8.0 change, mm-hmm. which for those of you who don't know, the pre-patch is when they sort of introduced the new changes to the game. They, they set the stage for the new expansion. And like Cataclysm was they changed the map for it. Cataclysm. We literally watched the Cataclysm yeah. happen. We watched Before the, the world. expansion came out. Yes. It, it was it was truly awesome. Um, for Wrath of the Lich King, mm-hmm. we fought the Lich King. We fought the hordes of yeah. the Lich King. Yeah. Um, you know the invasions, mm-hmm. and like every every expansion's had something different. This one, we're we're going through a little bit of storyline. The first piece opened up, you know, the orcs invading Darnassus to take mm-hmm. down the World Tree, 
it's truly epic. It's a little confusing if you're on the Horde side as a mm-hmm. druid. You're like, I don't feel so good about this, <laughs> but you still do it anyway. Um, so, Ricky, going into this expansion, mm-hmm. what's the thing you're most excited for? The thing that I'm most excited for is war mode. And the reason why is, well, okay, I'm going to say excited yet kind of conflicted about it because for me, yeah, I've always liked having like, okay, if you want to be PvE, here's a PvE server. If you want to be PvP, here you go. And for PvE, if you want to toggle it on, you can go ahead and do hashtag P. But the thing I like that they're doing with it is, all right, we're still go- we're just going to have everything Say be the same. P. No, I did. I meant you like did. backslash PvP. Yeah, I was like... Um, backslash PvP, not <laughs> we'll hashtag. We'll call you on that. Um, but I mean, the thing they like that they're doing is now it feels like PvP actually means something. Yeah. Um, and also because we play on a PvP server with the one we just started that we were streaming on. Yep. I no longer at one in the morning have to worry about going into Stranglethorn Vale and being uh, just demolished it's by a death Horde. trap. It is just don't even try. Like, and yep. then you'll you'll basically res sickness. They'll kill you again. I'll be like, I gotta get out of here. I'm going on to an alt. Yeah. And then you just you quit you, that you, character you just for a while. and you're gone. Yeah. Now I don't have to worry about that. But if you do want a PvP, it's gonna give you some rewards for fighting horde or fighting alliance if you're on the horde side. Yeah. No, I think it's super intriguing that they're trying to bring back the world PvP to World of mm-hmm. Warcraft because. Honestly, it's something that there there was not value there. Like there were the initial like, let's go raid a horde city, let's go raid mm-hmm. an alliance city. Sorry, we're alliance, so I'm gonna talk well, a lot about and raiding I mean, the horde. <laughs> most most of my career as an alliance player, yeah. it's really the horde dominating the alliance. I mean, it depends on server balance. Yeah. So like if the, the on ones a, that yes. I've been on, yep. the horde have dominated yeah. the alliance. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. Like the one we're currently on, um, it's like, well, can't it's use like the 80, auction 20. house right now. I'm going to the other auction house because I can't yeah. use this one. No one cares about the Dwarven District yeah. auction house. <laughs> Nobody cares. It's too far into Stormwind for that day. Exactly. But no, I think I think it's a really cool idea. And the fact that they're adding in, you have the oh, PvP talents that are also mm-hmm. automatically applied when you engage war mode. Yeah. They're, they're giving you that bonus XP for, mm-hmm. for being dangerous in war mode. I think the cool thing that they did was adding in that whole like, not rival, I forget what they call it, but... When I'm an alliance and I've the killed nemesis, nemesis, yes, the nemesis. Taking so it straight from You could from have Call multiple nemesi. Uh, Can you? I don't know. Oh, okay. Technically, I, if you, I always think of like Call of Duty, where it's like, hey, this guy killed you five times, you didn't kill him once, he's your nemesis. It's like, damn it. Pretty much that. So if you kill enough of the other uh, faction, mm-hmm. you become flagged basically and yeah. marked on the map as a high priority target, which basically, is so hey, cool. Take this guy down. Yeah. He it's need, so he, cool. He he's he's too good. We need to tell you where he is. Yep. So we're we're gonna expose that, and we'll give you bonus XP for mm-hmm. taking him down because yeah. he's gotten so much from farming you guys. Mm-hmm. Like it's one of the coolest things that they're trying to do to draw back some love to that world PvP. Because I feel like for for too long we've been buddy buddy. I n- well, I never was or huge just into non- PvP. You know, like, I, I guess there's a lack of care. Yeah. Well, like the only PvP I remember doing is when you and I would make the characters. Of like, ooh, we got this character up to 19. Oh, yeah. Got all this great gear. Like, there was like a set gear of like, this is what this character is. I'm going to go in. I'm going to own Warsong Gulch. And then Dude. like older, like when we, older, we get higher levels. The, I don't even remember what it was called. It was Arathi the. Arathi Basin, Altrak Valley. I think it was Arathi Basin. Because the Arathi Basin was the one with the towers, right? And you the had towers. to like go ahead no. and like. Destroy the towers as you're kind of no, one that, was on defense. That's, Al- that's Altarak Valley. Okay, that's the one I remember. Arathi Basin was the one with the. It's got like multiple cat points, and you have to hold the point. That's right. That's AB. That's the one I never did. It was the yeah, AV. Um, was, AV. Uh, AV and Warsong Gulch were the two that I remember doing. Other than that, it was like in the open world. I had no reason to do PvP. It's like eh, it doesn't entertain right. me because I wasn't now, really good at it. Well, that's the thing, and it had no reward to it. True, 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 true. I mean, you have honorable kills, but, but I it can was do so that much easier to farm in Warsaw yeah. or AV. Uh, now it turns into there's a little bit of fun, there's a little bit mm-hmm. of competition add, and there's some risk and reward in the enabling war mode. I like how you get experience for it too. Yeah, because like, it, it, I kind of wonder if people, if it will change how people kind of. Do I wonder if it'll change how people play the game in a sense? Mm-hmm. Because I wonder if it's like, all right, we're gonna get our group of five, we're gonna go over to the other continent, 
and go where similar level would be. And we're going to try to just screw them up while they're leveling and kind of start this war per se. Yeah. And the thing I love about it most is from what I'm reading mm-hmm. is that you can only engage world PVP in Orgrimmar or in Stormwind. Correct. So it can't be like, hey, I'm out there. Oh, you can't touch me. I'm not right. PVP anymore. You can't yep. touch me. It's like playing tag. You can't go, oh, not it. I mean, I'm, the old school the days of Bubble Hearth. Uh, yeah. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I hated I that. I mean, you could still kind of do that if you're a paladin, but it's not so like much. you can turn it off while right. you're in the field. Nope. Nope. Absolutely true. So they are adding that, and you do get additional, on top of XP, mm-hmm. you do get better rewards. You uh, also get quests. world quest rewards yeah. is what they're calling it. So like, it's I think it's a win all around. Mm-hmm. I think the thing is, I want to see how server balance plays into griefing like you talked yeah. about like when there's those 80 20 servers or 90 10 servers mm-hmm. as there are like it's very hard to balance uh horde and alliance sometimes i know they do shared but mm-hmm. still when you get grief like i i could see some people just never turn it on like they're gonna play yeah, the, no. the rest of wow are, are you it's, are you going to turn on war mode i might but not by myself yeah really like i'm not gonna do like i see war mode as like hey a couple of us are gonna get together and then kind of do a battle kind of a thing of like let's go out there and really try to like the whole thing is to grieve people yeah you're basically. like i'm out here to fuck with people basically that's what it is like when i'm by myself yep. if i'm questing out there yeah i don't want to deal with someone killing me there was one time in stranglethorn Vale, the mm-hmm. bane of my existence that place is awesome um where it was the greatest thing ever because i was on my druid yeah at the time my night elf druid and this torn comes over Tries to kill me. I escape his clutches and kind of like panther away yeah. with my dash and stuff. Yep. He followed me. <laughs> he kept following me. And I was like, dude, you're not going to kill me. Never so I kept running me. and like ducking out of here. Like I used my crowd control to like knock him out or like the roots to yep. entangle. Whatever it was that kind of crowd controlled them mm-hmm. to where I could just run away and hide. you just and then playing up mode. Death guy. Yeah, I stealth mode. And then I'm like. All right, I'm not going to go here. And then someone else would come by, higher level, see me easily, dead. Because <laughs> this guy was like a level higher than yeah. me. So his his damage wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to get you. one shot. Yeah. yeah. But I basically greased up death guide him and won because he didn't kill me. <laughs> I felt very proud about that. So yeah, I think I think it's a huge plus, mm-hmm. personally. I think that them adding war mode, adding the additional talents, adding the additional perks for going war mode. Win all round. I'm also excited about professions in a sense because part of me is old man Ricky where it's like, hey, you know what? Back in my day, we had to start from level one and we leveled up that profession. Yep. But there's part of me that's like, hey, I make a new character. I want a profession that I haven't used. Hey, this makes it a lot easier to where I don't have to grind it. If you want to go learn the old zones, Mm -hmm. be my guest. But you don't have to. You can Mm -hmm. just walk right into the expansion and be like... I feel like being a tailor today. Yep. And guess what? I'm going to go learn tailoring, and I'm going to be ready for the new expansion Mm -hmm. the day of. Like, Like, that's all it is. There's a lot of them that they were saying, like, hey, if you're leveling up right now, Mm -hmm. just stop. Just stop leveling your professions, and if you want to change, right now is the best time to change. Because it's like, hey, I'll change it now. Then when the expansion hits, boom, I can start, like you said, in that zone for the new BFA zone that we'll have well, you mentioned leveling up and that's what mm-hmm. people aren't doing today <laughs> because blizzard just fucked with the leveling balance mm-hmm. right now they did a stat squish as they do for um they've done a major one like two expansions ago i want to mm-hmm. say and then prior to that it was i think one or two before yeah um usually they try to balance things pretty well they've got some intentions they they do a little bit of testing and they see what works best Right now, what they did was turn shit sideways. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes so fucking long to level right now. It's. It, I feel like they're encouraging people to just pay to get the 110. Like mm-hmm. that, it feels like they don't even want you to level the characters because it is such a long, long time to do it. And they, they admit they're fixing things mm-hmm. as they go. But the whole thing is because of stat squish, mobs have so much more health for scale. Mm-hmm. I was reading up uh, this one guy. I thought they. I thought they brought the oh no they didn't bring down the health they brought down the damage they brought the down your does. damage oh, well and the damage the mob does as well I think right but but the, the health is still the same right their health mm-hmm. did not change as much yeah. so the problem is you know when clearing old content mm-hmm. uh, as like a one ten you used to be able to run through and like for a Q yeah mm-hmm. I could run a Q forty and I would one shot everything 
now I have to like four hit things. Mm -hmm. You know how long, like you literally just quadrupled yeah. my time spent for doing things you like that. You basically made it a chore. Yeah. And, You're and making leveling a chore again. And that's when the game yeah. doesn't get fun. What's funny is people are freaking out about this. And then I'm going to wait for WoW original, WoW mm -hmm. classic to launch. One leveling is really a chore. Mm -hmm. Those people, mm -hmm. oh, they love it. <laughs> They're like, I want to be level 42, mm -hmm. and I want it to take me four hours. Remember when you would hit, like, if you got a level or two in a day, you felt like it was a good day. Oh, my day. God, it was an accomplishment. Like, dude, I got I got two levels today? Pretty Man, good. today was a good fucking day, man. Yeah. Two levels, and I three, got two. If you got three... Dude, that unspeakable. And unspeakable at the time. And I found a group in uh, LFG chat. Yeah. <laughs> got invited. <laughs> walked on over. Oh my God, they didn't even have looking for group. Like, we had to go yeah. in yeah. backslash four and try to find it. Yep. Like, LF cars on. Dude, whisper. Dude, I I'm all in. I'm like, all in. Wait, wait, wait. What's your item Give level? Give me your spec, man. Give me your spec. What's your item level, bro? Give me your spec. Give, tell me a little bit. The thing that I'm looking at here. And have this you cleared is, it? So let me see the achievements. Yeah, let me see your achievements. Even before achievements, how far have you We're been? We're just gatekeeping this stuff. Uh, how far have you been? Yep. Um, and they would put that in there. Looking for blank for cars on must have been to this point. Yep. Like, they didn't want you. But if you haven't you done prints, this. like, why am I even inviting you? Exactly. Um, But... Just a little example of what you were saying with like the how much yeah. they squished. So these are item levels. So for vanilla, the original item level is 88, post squish 62. For Burning Crusade, a 164 became a 94. <laughs> for Wrath, it was 284 down to 102. Cataclysm was 416 to 114. We're getting a little bigger here. Yeah. Uh, Mists. Was five sixty six to five or to one thirty, warlords was seven twenty seven thirty five to one forty nine. Yep, legion is a thousand original, two fifty six now or two sixty five now. Yeah, no, it's that's your item level now. It was in a thousand item level. Now it's a two sixty five item level but you gotta balance the game otherwise these numbers like they just mm -hmm. get outrageous i understand yeah. the need but it seems like they didn't really figure out how to do it the right way mm -hmm. um at all just at like, all just make the make the health smaller so that it's like okay you scaled it with me yeah no no now it's just it's it, they just they ruined that but i mean it, let's be honest mm -hmm. if you're, if you're there... listening to this you're probably not worrying about leveling yeah. characters Let, right now and here's a dumb question for me sure why the squish in general? Like, do you, why do you need the squish? Because why going into it? Because doing five point five million damage versus doing five point five thousand damage, it's just easier to digest those numbers. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's all it really comes down to. Mm -hmm. It's just we keep tacking on zeros every single mm -hmm. expansion, and like so this is kind of like a reset where it's like, hey, yeah. we're gonna bring them. Yeah. Back so down. right now everybody's doing a couple thousand. Okay. You know, feel fine. Feel mm -hmm. fine. Uh, but what I do want to hit on is mm -hmm. obviously with this patch, legendaries. Got Thanos. Yep. They're, they're gone. Well, they're not gone, but they're dead. The artifacts. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So your artifact weapon, um, your legendary weapon, whether it was like Lightbringer or whether it mm -hmm. was whatever your class's specific, spec specific mm -hmm. item was, like that weapon is now like been basically powered down. Your talents, basically a couple of them got moved to talent trees as options if you want to keep playing that same style. But having an artifact weapon was one of the coolest things about this expansion. And I know you didn't pointless. get to play it. Yeah, I didn't get like, that But, like, could high. you imagine having, like, Lightbringer as your weapon? Mm -hmm. Like, having, and having then now a legendary, and like, now in it's lore pointless. and built-in. It just looks cool. It gets replaced mm -hmm. by these quests coming out right now for the 8.0 pre-patch, basically, mm -hmm. and you replace it with a quest item. A no nothing, no name, mm. just quest item. That would make me angry. Right? Because you, you the, spend this whole expansion... Just devoting time to the building up this weapon. You keep putting stuff in. No, well, it, to get it and even just build no, it up. Getting isn't it? Getting it's easy. Okay. It's a quest chain. It is like whatever. So it's just building it up that takes the whole expansion. You're pumping points into it. You're mm -hmm. making it better. You're making it better. You're getting cool skins for it. Mm -hmm. You're adding uh, abilities uh, available to you through this artifact power. Mm -hmm. And there it goes. Just. Gone. I like your reference of just... I got Thanos snapped. Finger snap. It's gone. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it was... And unlike the next Avengers movie, it ain't coming back. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> it, it was a cool concept, though. I think the whole, mm -hmm. like, playing with your class fantasy, like, they really drove home class fantasy yeah. by having the artifact weapons. 
and now you're replacing it with a quest item already. It's already better than your weapon. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we go into this expansion, obviously it will be clearly replaced. Um, but like, how do you feel about that? Like, we're we're going from the the hardcore like you are your class mode mm -hmm. to like now we're gonna keep building on. You're you're gonna get better. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have done the artifact thing until the expansion. Because it's like we're technically still in for me, we're technically still in Legion. But um, we're not. Although we're not, we're in pre patch. We're um, in patch eight point oh. Eight point oh means we yeah. are in BFA. But like part of me is also the expansion hasn't dropped, so are we really yeah, in I, I BFA? Gotcha. No, no, that's totally So fair. I would have kept it. I would have kept it, make it feel like for the two weeks, and I get people are going to say, well, a little over two weeks. The upcoming Tuesday as we're recording this will be uh, two weeks until it drops. Some people will be like, whatever, for two weeks you don't get to live with it, whatever, it's over, get Does over it. Does it make that big of a difference? I w to some people, yeah, because you think about it, you put time, you put sweat and te well, sweat and tears um, into this weapon, like you said, putting points into it. It's almost like an accomplished thing. It would almost be like going back to BC. And I'm going to re relate it to you because you actually got to Illidan and that far up. And then Sunwell. It would be like if you spent all the time that you did trying to get the Warglaves, actually got the Warglaves, and then... Warglaves. Two weeks before the expansion, they were like, oh, yeah, Dave, we're replacing those with greens. I mean, they sort of did. Yeah. But it was like you could use them up. Basically, they were still good for a couple levels. Yeah. You could still rock the warblades because mm -hmm. they were so damn good. No, but this, Same one with, is, uh, this one's like, oh, if you don't have these greens, right? it's pointless. Yeah. I, I think it's a blue for this pre-patch. I'm pretty sure, but I, still, I point tried. To, I tried to point ov peen. overshoot. I know you're you're to trying to drive that point home. Trying to just dig <laughs> in a little there, but yeah, I, the the one cool thing that um, I, I'm reading on uh, Dana Geek mm -hmm. right now, and they're talking about um, you know it does bring back the coolness of going into a raid looking for that weapon upgrade finally again. Like mm -hmm. when, two years of having the same weapon, are people tired of it? And they're like, maybe you know now you get to go to a raid and roll the dice and see if you get lucky with a weapon upgrade. I'm like. I remember that. That's not fun. That's <laughs> that wasn't fun. No, you're I mean, talking. Was, you're talking was, Burning Crusade. Are you talking? I'm, BC I'm talking days? the entirety of my. Because wow, like I, it was fun at times when you get that weapon that you've been waiting for. You are just top of the world. Like your damage. I kind of liked it. My first thing is I get a new weapon. First thing I'm doing, check the damage meters. Let's go into this new boss after I drop an enchant yeah. on it, and let's see how much better I well, am. Well, it's not even that. I kind of. For me, it was. <laughs> although it was frustrating when you'd run something and not like you'd run something it and so it won't sweeter. drop. Or you'd run something, it would drop, the leader of the raid would go, all right, roll for it, and then you'd lose it to some punk who was like, oh, it's my off spec. But now we have personal loot. Mm -hmm. So personal loot's all on for all time. Yeah. Um, which means that basically everybody gets their own drops. Doesn't matter. You're not sharing loot. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in a raid and, you know, everybody has personal loot, you can still say, well, I don't need this. If anyone wants this, I can yeah. trade it to you. But the point is, you don't you don't lose that anymore. Yeah. It's no longer a case where it's I, up for grabs and you would get passed over. I liked the point though of, oh my god, here comes the boss. God, I hope I get it. I hope that kind of like gamble or because a like, weapon was always like more important than any other piece of gear. Yeah. I don't care what it was. It's like you're. We talked about on the fast break lottery tickets. Yes, it was like a lottery ticket you where won. it's like I am buying the ticket by coming into the raid. Am I gonna win the prize? I don't know. Let's see. Yep, you roll the dice, Each you boss kill the boss. Each was a new one. And now, I think that was the coolest thing, is when you're pushing progression, mm -hmm. when your guild is taking on these bosses for the first time, and you get the first down, dude, and that first loot drops. Dude, it was all drops. about, like, dude, we got to get our guild up. That's we some wanna... sweat equity right there. Uh -huh. You put in your time with that guild. You put in your time on those wipes. I'll I will never forget. God, I guess will what? be on my deathbed. Like, I will be dying, Dave, on my deathbed. You'll say, hey, Ricky, who's the number one guild BC? Just Crusade. Yeah, we played on a loon in the U.S., by the way. Um, I, and I will sit there whispering, Just Crusade. I, I, can, I can still. Dude, I can tell you how GC, many wipes. Baby. I can tell you how GC. many wipes my guild had on Illidan before we got our first kill. Mm -hmm. I know it because I, have the, I had a soundtrack basically playing to it, and I listened to that soundtrack so many times. I can tell you when in the songs things happen. Like, oh. It was just down to, like, you memorize stuff. But Is there a way to look at old rankings I'm i don't try to find there it. probably is there probably is but um let's get back to bfa yeah. a little bit let's talk about the actual expansion coming up 
So on top of all of this fun, we now have these new islands. We get standing up trolls, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. We get orcs who stand off. We get um, the Kultiras, Kultirans, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, big, bigger, uh, stronger humans. Yeah. Uh, which have awesome lore. I don't know if you've seen the Jaina trailer. I have not. Oh my god. Uh, basically, Jaina Proudmore, uh, one of the biggest lore characters, like one of the most pivotal Alliance lore characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a mage. Uh, awesome backstory got kind of like flushed out a little bit more. She is our bridge to these people, uh, her family actually. And honestly, like I got goosebumps watching the video. If you is haven't it seen Warbringer it, yes. Jaina? If you haven't seen it, go watch it. You need I'm the not, music on. I, no, <sighs> you need the music. That's the problem. I can't just see it. We're, you can see it. We, we're, okay. we can take a break okay. in a sec because okay. we are coming up on a recording time. Anyway, we're going to keep talking WoW yeah. though because we love WoW. <laughs> Dave's like, I just want to keep going WoW. And on second thought, Ricky, let's actually just watch it right now yeah. on the show. I mean, I start like in between these, I was like, oh. Let's start. That's like you know what? I forgot we can do that. We could do that. We forgot can. That's a thing. I mean, there's. Uh, let's be honest. The Comic Con ones, uh, Warner Brother. Yep. Uh, they're a little bit of assholes, and we're like, hey, we're gonna make money. I was like, fine, take our twenty five cents. Mm, they the flag Johnny podcast. It, they didn't flag. It's just one of those things where they go, yeah, the ad revenue comes to us, not mm. you. Which I'm like. Whatever. We don't make a ton of money. It's not about making the money. It's about making the content for these guys. It's about making the show for yeah. the people who love the content. Making it great. No. That's why we have our patrons. Oh, I thought you were going to say making it great again. And I was about to, <laughs> no, oh, no. I was about to reach across this table and smack you upside the face. No. But, but go gonna, ahead and count it down. Not going to do So these. if you want to watch with us, actually, you'll see it on the screen. Yeah, I should put on the right headphones so that I can hear these. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want me to count it down? Well, though? I mean, yeah, I'll let you count it down. Okay, so what we do, since you're new to this, Dave, is yeah. I usually just go Some Rick three. and Johnny magic. Yeah, I just go three, two, one, and then on go, we hit the space bar. So oh, wait, three, wait. two, one, go. We probably won't talk a lot at the beginning. It's so quiet. It's very quiet, and it really sets the mood. getting goosebumps like the low key just like, I like the guitar where sailors fought and died the admiral fell at their because she left his side and this is Jaina telling her own story here yeah Oh. 
Oh yeah. What the hell? Did she just resurrect this boat? Not a boat. That, sir, is a ship. And a large one at that. See the goosebumps. I'm listening now. So that was her dad the whole time. Well, I well, her dead dad. I heard across a moonlit sea the old voice warning me. Beware, beware, the daughter of the sea. Now, yeah. the question that I have, and this is probably a duh question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Um, ask away. She's the mage from Hearthstone, right? Yes. Like when you play the mage in Hearthstone, yep. you're playing her. Yep. All right. Like halfway through, I was like, oh, I've seen her yeah, before. Blizzard, when, I play, used her in Hearthstone. when I play Hearthstone, I yeah. see her all the time. I like the art style of it. Too. The art was fantastic. The song, the <laughs> tone, the... Uh, I mean, it had it had the ups and downs from mm -hmm. like the haunting little guitar strokes yeah. to like when the entire group of people sang along yeah. with it about mm -hmm. the pride of Theram. Like, you felt it. It hit, no, me, it, it hit me right in the feels, and it told like a very interesting one side of the story. You know, she betrayed her father when he needed her. Basically, mm -hmm. he he chased after her and yeah. obviously ran into the horde and died. I uh, still love from so like great. an alliance side where. That to me is like as a horde player, you probably don't see the same thing, but from an alliance side where it's like the alliance will always see the horde and especially the orcs Invaders. as these monsters. Yeah. As these like non human monsters that we cannot and obviously battle for Azeroth, that's gonna be oh, it, the it, whole it thing on. of it. Is like we cannot live together. We are not supposed to be civil together well to be fair and i i, I don't disagree with your point but i want to i want to add on to it that mm -hmm. uh battle for azeroth is sort of kicked off by sylvanas the the war chief now mm -hmm. going in and that's what this 8.0 is yeah you know it's it's time to go fuck things up mm -hmm. uh so to be fair you know or orcs not necessarily taking the charge on this one but uh yeah, it's getting messy and it's getting horde versus alliance, and I think it's it's getting a little serious. And the and the thing that I like is from like wow non people like non wow people that yeah. I've seen talk about this, they'd be like, "Well, haven't they battled for Azeroth already?" Yeah, yeah, but we're doing it again. Yeah, and that's when it's. I think that's sort of when the game's at its best when you feel that it means something to be on a mm -hmm. faction. You know, it, it there's a different level of community to like. I remember in the old days when horde raided. Like Iron Forge or Stormwind, yes. like you got to like, guilds got up. You for got that. a group we're of like, people together. It's like we're, we're like, going. Let's go. We're gonna go murder them. We're gonna then we're gonna go to their home. Yeah. and shit. We're where gonna they try live. to. We're gonna try to go to Orgrimmar, and we just got decimated. I mean, no, I, I had some good ones. Where <laughs> I we chained did them. We did. We did all the horde capitals because mm -hmm. there's an achievement. Of course, yeah. there's achievement. Uh, I think that's for the war bear. I think uh, Undercity was the worst one to do, only because that was no amazing. one was there. It was a maze. I couldn't give Dude, it was a maze out. playing a horde and being true. like, how do I find my way around here? True, true, true. Um, but yeah, we, we've gushed about WoW for about mm -hmm. a half an hour now. No, I love um, it. I could, I could talk all day about it. Easily could talk more. If you guys want more <laughs> WoW content, let us know down we below. We gotta get back to stream. We used to stream it and then we kind of yeah. did VidCon. Yeah, we did VidCon <laughs> and then momentum got lost. Now playing the game uh, oh. at a low level sucks mm -hmm. at the moment. We'll see how many hot patches they drop are we now just gonna, Are we just gonna come back? Um, uh, I'm already playing with, I know, with the old but crew. Like, now, that you, like, now that you tell me that leveling sucks so much, Part of me is like, should I just wait till the expansion? I would, I would wait two more days because they, they've been mm -hmm. hot patching like basically every couple of hours to fix specific things. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, there was a blue post by the devs talking about how they're working. They don't want to apply a bandaid to everything and just fix the wrong things. Mm -hmm. 
they're being strategic in their manner, which I'll give them credit. That's sort of an interesting take for Blizzard, finally, to uh, not just... To they're take carbon over, precision. To take an Overwatch approach to the, the thing, They're Dave? going precision on this one. Basically, oh, we did this, and oh, we kind of screwed that up, so we're going to... We're going to... We're going to tweak it a little bit yeah they're they're gonna they're gonna hack it back bit, mm-hmm. bits and pieces um but no i think i think it's totally worth coming back uh before the expansion you definitely want to come back before the expansion because mm-hmm. you want to do this pre this 8.0 content uh this week is the first part next week is a new part the following week mm-hmm. is the final and i think then we're live okay if i can count weeks correctly because yeah, so, from tuesday it's two weeks yes and uh i'm psyched I can't wait. I've been talking. I I went back to my old crew that I raid with, uh, raided with multiple expansions. Yeah, instead ago. of just saying to Ricky, "Hey, you want to jump on?" Dave goes to his old crew. I jump. I jumped on to Mumble, not Mumble. Jesus, Discord. I jumped on <laughs> the Discord. I'm, we taking it that far? You I got to team speak. Team speak. Ventrilo. <laughs> we can ventrilo this. We're hopping on to team. God. The Sita Harry team Dota. Speak. Come on. Oh um, man. But I yeah, I jumped down there. We were, we were just talking garbage. We were gonna play a couple games of Heroes of the Storm because um, mm-hmm. it's a fun. You Get know, some whatever. League of Legends in there. No, we don't play League. <laughs> we, we don't with that game. We, we all buy Heroes of the Storm. It's just it's easy. It's fun to play. It's quick. Just bring it back all the old ones. Just jump <sighs> on some Counter Strike. Uh, nobody, nobody play, will play Counter Strike. I don't think you played Counter Strike with them though. No, I didn't. Uh, actually, I played CS Go when okay. it went live. Uh, but none of them are good. Point being, <laughs> went back to play a little bit of Heroes of the Storm, and then they were like, "Well, are you coming back?" I was like, coming back, like, why would I do that? Like, this game, mm-hmm. like, I'm done. I don't get the time. And they're like, oh, dude, you got you got to start reading up on this. And they start talking to me. And the more yeah. they talk to me about the lore, the more they talk to me about the gameplay, the changes, all of this stuff, they got me hooked again, man. I got I got the wow cravings. Um, I got the, I'm scratching my arm. This like, is, Ooh, give me this some is of that. the part when Dave and I went back to wow. I was like, hey. I don't know if I want to be hardcore. And Dave's like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't totally want to go don't hardcore to, no, either. No, and no. now, Dave, the same thing that happened before. I get riled up. It's happening now yeah. where Ricky's going to be very casual yep. and Dave's going to be hardcore and then not be able to play with Ricky well, because his progression is so, so here's, far. So here's the thing. Um, <laughs> I've got time off when this expansion goes live. Yeah. I'm going to go back. I'm turning back the clock uh-huh. to, to circa high school. And you're just going to stay up all night. I'm not going to do anything but play World of Warcraft <laughs> for 48 hours straight, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to wake up before the rating. Dave's not going to shower. Goes Why shower? I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to have all my food prepped. I'm going to do some food, food prep the day before. So we're, so we're going to have to do wellness checks? Like you might. Knock on the door to make sure Dave is still alive? You might need to do a wellness check. We might have to bring you food because Dave might forget no, to I'm get gonna, food. No, I'm going to try to food prep. I'm going to go the day the day before. So Uber Or eats. the morning of. No, no, no. Morning <laughs> of, I'm going to I'm gonna do a, I got the slow cooker. Mm-hmm. I'm going to slow cook up some, I'm, I'm thinking pork so that way I can do like some barbecue pork. So you get some 12-hour gaming in, then maybe eat, some then jerk, come back for maybe 12 some, hours. Dude. And then repeat the whole thing over. No, it'll it'll be like <laughs> I'm a I'm a wake up. I'm gonna play World of Warcraft all day. I'll I'll go get some food when I need to. I'll, I'll just go sleep, and then I'll wake up four hours later, and then I'll go play World of Warcraft. You for know, a it's whole like day. Do you, like you know, it's gonna really happen. What you're gonna be like, dude? I'm gonna use this slow cooker. You're gonna start playing, get hungry at like eight o'clock at night, and go, oh shit, I was supposed to put the slow cooker on. Well, no. What do I do now? That's the thing. The expansion actually doesn't. It launches at night for us. Yeah. Uh, I want to say at like. Ooh, shit. I know there's a clock. I'll find it. Um, Central time. The reason yeah. why Sorry, I, go ahead. The reason why I asked, though, is should I jump in beforehand, is I have a little bit of a dilemma of it's either play WoW yep. or play a game that I've been putting off for the better end of, I don't know, six months oh, and actually that? play Celeste that I heard you got to – I'm like, I heard you got to play this game. It released in – um, January, it's like a side scroller, um, uh, platform game Five with a great PM? story. 5, 5 PM, PM our time on, in basically, yeah. 5 PM on August 13th. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be online. I'm going to be playing. I'm going to be living there, but continue and on. Dave's going to stream the whole thing. No, it's got like, am. we'll see. It's got great reviews, like 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 9, 10, 10, 80 out of 100, 8 out of 10. Polygon gave it the worst with 8 out of 10. And I'm like, uh, should I start this or should I just go play WoW again? Because it's, it's, it's yin and yang, Dave. <sighs> it's yin and yang. It depends. Like, WoW, the biggest thing that makes a difference is the community. Mm-hmm. 
If, well, if yeah, you if don't you're not have, be playing with me, then why the hell would I play alone? If you don't have the community, why the hell would I play alone, Dave? I, I'm just saying that my right now priority is is going hardcore and raiding with these <laughs> bunch of idiots that I know. I've known these kids for ten plus years now. Ten years of my mm-hmm. life where I've talked to these people. I know their lives. I know. I know them. Mm-hmm. They know me. Like it's a weird relationship with people I've never met. Mm-hmm. I know we're gonna have a meetup at some point. We, we've yeah. talked about all it. the people that I met from WoW yeah. that were like didn't know you. Mm-hmm. Never talk to them again. I mean that's that's the never talk. Well, that's basically because one had a divorce and wow. broke up a guild. Yeah, yeah but uh, never. I was like, you know what? Once I quit the game, I quit the game. But yeah, so. You're, you're, you're flip-flopping on BFA. You're like, eh, should mm-hmm. I come back? Should I not? Well, beforehand. If you're I'll putting come it back on, at BFA. If you're putting it on me, I feel bad. Because now you're like, well, if Dave's not playing with me, I'm not playing the game. Well, it's then I play by myself. You could you could make new friends. You, you could try to play with my friends. That's right. We have They're a, terrible that's people. That's right, Dave. We started the guild. I'm going back to our guild so they don't forget about it. You can go play in mashed if potatoes. If they're still there. Or maybe our, fr- maybe our friends and family on the channel want to come play with Hell us. Hell yeah. Mashed potatoes maybe our viewers. On, I forgot what server we're on. Bone Chewer? Yes, that's it. Is it? I could, think so. It could be Bone Chewer. I think it's Bone Chewer. That sounds really... Uh, familiar. Really familiar, yeah. Yeah, I I think it's bone chill. Um, I would 100 percent recommend playing before the expansion goes live. I would 100 percent because they have catch up mechanics in place, where your gear, like the whole point of this. I'm an, 8. I'm, an, 0, I'm an idiot. I could just log in right now, but I you think could. I'd have to download you have, everything. I say, are you? On I'd the... have to download everything. I'm not logged in right oh, okay. now. Um, <laughs> I've only I'm not, done, I'm not only, playing World of Warcraft while recording. Totally I, not. I have only done that on one podcast, and it might have been a fast break. Find out which one. Oh my god! Go I hate back you. and try to find out which one. I hate you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they've got all these catch-up mechanics. You can mm-hmm. get geared up. Like if you haven't raided at all this expansion, which I haven't, I, I played beta. I've been leveling up. I had like sixty hours worth of beta, and then mm-hmm. I just never played when the expansion went live. Mm-hmm. Um, regret it a little bit, but I need a lifetime. Now you're talking about before Legion. Yeah, for Legion. Okay. So now with Battle for Azeroth, they have this catch-up mechanic uh, mm-hmm. that they introduced with 8.0 and. You can basically gear equal to like the normal tier of the final raid, mm-hmm. so that way going into the expansion, like the you're first couple of, quests, you're, there. you're geared enough to do the quest without a struggle, mm-hmm. which is a great idea. So, I don't know. I think it's worth going back for. I think you got to find your community or make your community, as we would say. Um, any final thoughts on BFA? You know, I'm excited for it. The war mode's going to be the thing I'm most interested about, only because. I wonder how it's going to play out and how it's going to be received. It's kind of like when you say something. You might say something thinking, hey, you know what? This is how it's going to land, and it lands completely different than what you think. Is that going to be the same for war mode? They think it's going to be this. Will it land like that, or will it land as something else? And they got to kind of tweak it as we go along. It's super true. I'm hyped. I'm 11 out of 10 all in on World of Warcraft right now. Um, Dave's turning back the clock circa late 2000s. Yeah, I'm not going to see the outside world. Ricky's going to check off on me, make sure I'm alive. I don't circa even know if I'm... 2006, 2005? I'll be 100% honest with you. That week, I don't know that there will be a tool to game with Dave Oster. Yeah, there, no. It, it might, might be, be with Mark Webber. Mark and I. Because I think... Na- no. So correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. It's I will. not next week. But that, the following week. So the ninth you're not here. Correct. Okay. Then I've been be tell, then I've been telling Mark the wrong day. I've that been is telling not Mark good. it's next week that nope. you're not here. It's I am the here ninth next you're week. not here. I am here next week. So I will it'll not be, be here next. us three and then it will be just me and we'll Mark. We get one more week of you, me, and Mark in. Yeah. That'd be great. We before can, Mark we can dub that meetings again. Before Mark and I decide, all right, do we want it to be like an onside kick or do we want it to be like a graphic conversation? Graphic conversation. It's like which one of us which one of us is gonna host? Give me that graphic. Um but Mark, yeah, Mark, he might like this side of the table. I don't know. Fair enough. Let's wander over into the weird world of Oculus. Though. Okay, we're 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 getting in. We're getting out of the comfort zone because mm-hmm. honestly, like VR is something that I have had super high hopes for. Yeah, I've seen it like be a f- super fun platform. Uh, I keep saying the word super because I just think VR and super hot, like literally mm-hmm. one of the best games on VR. Uh, super, super hot. hot. Um, if you haven't watched it, if you want a great intro video, go watch the guys at uh, Team Four Star play Vegeta <laughs> plays Super Hot. <laughs> I'm not repping for them. I'm just saying it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, basically, Oculus Go supporting you know, be the, the headset market because mm-hmm. it's it's dropping off face. Is there a future for the head for the you know Oculus or for VR in we general? Had, we had talked about this before, and I remember Mark the first time we recorded 
a too old to game before we even were recording. We were kind of talking about VR, yeah. and like me and you were like, "Oh no, no, it's the future of gaming." I want it to and, be a thing. And Mark's like, "No, it's not. It's a fad." And like you look at it, where Xbox tried their VR, it's not going to happen. PlayStation has the VR, but yeah. like it's been dropping off steadily um, as we go on. And really, the only one that's been consistent for the computer side is um, Oculus. And for me, I wonder if it's ever going to be a thing. Because I know Mark likes to use the joke where it's like, yeah, people only like VR because they want a ready player one. Like, that's what they want it to be. But then you get the other side. Like, I've heard people go, yeah, VR is great. Like, the game's awesome. But then it's like, I can only play it for so long before I have to be like, all right, I have to take this headset off because... I'm kind of getting you, a little you start motion to feel, sick. Oh, well, I mean, I, I never got motion sick, but I do feel like I overheated. Your equi- or your equilibrium is equilibrium. also off, too, at times. Like, you can't just sit yeah. there on a couch, look at a TV, and play for hours on end. I mean, that's fair. Uh, but at the same time, like, I think the You're biggest... You're also moving, too, like you said. The biggest Exerting thing... physical... Yeah, the biggest thing for me is, like, people tr- People want it to be Sword Art Online. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever watched the anime Sword Art yeah. Online, SAO. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly popular. It's old. It was from, like, 2012, 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was the thing. You wanted to flip on a headset and get to play a game. And I think we, we've, we don't have the technology yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously not to get close to that weird psychopathic world, but yeah. to get to the point where you can like feel comfortable in like a natural range of motions mm-hmm. with controllers um, and and the ability to play a game, it just it's not there yet. Something's mm-hmm. not right about the nunchuck kind of controls that we've got. Um, I think that if you develop it more, I think if VR has more time, it can be something special. I think that they have a ton of potential what they can do, but we need to either have some sort of technology breakthrough or find a better medium for controllers and hand motion. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it's gesture based, like Xbox tried to do the gesture shit failed horribly, but maybe, you know, in a year or two, we'll have something where it's like, maybe it's a, maybe we'll go back to the power glove. <laughs> maybe you'll have gloves that it's like certain hand motions do certain things like with the keyboard on the arm. Dude, look, so I, can I mean, they, the, the old, um, Star Wars game, they mm-hmm. had the one where you get to hold a lightsaber, and yep. that's your controller. Mm-hmm. Like Stuff like that is awesome, and I want more of it. I don't want VR to be 3D TV. No. I don't want it to be a gimmick that dies. I think that there is so much potential there mm-hmm. that I feel like it was almost like too early. Like We came out to the market with this awesome product because somebody you know wanted to break ground, and people scrapped to get the uh, games out there and content for it. But we haven't truly figured out how to best utilize it. My favorite points of VR, Mm -hmm. and this is me watching most of them because I was never in the VR camp to be like, I've got to I've got to buy a VR. Yeah. Um, It's either the games like I can't remember what it was called, but it was by um, Roland, Justin Roland, who did Rick and Morty. Um, And it's basically that like pinch and grab kind of a game. Where it's like your first person looking. It's like, I got to pick this up and put it over here. And I'm interacting with funny things. Or like I can pick up the stapler and just kind of loft it over and throw it. And it's that very like click grab kind of a game. Yeah. Or the ones that were also the most um, interested, the most that grabbed my attention was horror games are great for VR. Immersing yourself in that world. like. The first one I kind of watched was someone play, um, is it Amnesia is the one I'm thinking of? Amnesia is a fantastic horror game. That's the one, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. where there's like the figures that are following you and you got to like hide in the shadows. Right, right. And while they pass by. Light attracts them, movement, noises, and if- Playing that in VR- would be amazing. Would have put myself. Exactly. Or it like, took everything in my like in my mm-hmm. control to actually make it through the game. I suck at horror games. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the most intense, like I played it with a friend. Like we were both playing at the same time, mm-hmm. um, over the internet, of course, on our own. But like it was the like, we're doing this, we're talking about this, and like the music, the ambiance, and mm-hmm. and it was I had a blacked out room. Yep. And now the only light was coming off of my computer screen. If that was a VR Whew. Could you imagine, Whew. and this is like going to be... I even think about horror. That's genius. Could you imagine FNAF 
in VR? Like, yeah, Matt Pat did a whole thing what where a, it was like, yeah, no, like, dude, where I would he freak that, out but and like, like slap a headset off my head. FNAF <laughs> VR, where basically you have to, yeah, you have the controllers in your hand, but you have to literally like turn your head to look here, look there. You like look, look one way, you look back, and it's like. Boom, something's there. And if, you got to do the thing that you do, like, If shut they did the, the door. FNAF catalog, like, the entire catalog, mm-hmm. library, whatever you want to call it, yeah. in VR, you mm-hmm. would sell a million units of VR. Exactly. That's just on that one game. Like, mm-hmm. that's how popular that game is. And that's, I know we, we gushed about FNAF before, um, but FNAF, it's just even because you, it's such a big cultural thing Even right if now. you did just FNAF 1, because... No, the, you got to do them all. You, the thing I'm thinking, you do them in time. You don't oh, put them all true. in one game. But, like, FNAF 1 works perfectly... Because you've got the turn, turn, all right, pull up your thing. You've got the two doors on each side. You've got the computer up front. Yeah. FNAF 2 is a little weird because you got the main hallway that you got to put right. your flashlight at, which that would be weird. Instead you of just totally clicking a bu- yeah. button, you have to actually yep. point and hit a button for the flashlight. Yeah. There's no rooms on the outside. It's all vents and stuff. So that one would be a little weird, but you could do it. FNAF 3, though, the one with spring trap, big window in front of you, door to the right, ventilation system to the left, and having to turn for each one of those yep. would be amazing. And, like, the thing that pops up with Balloon Boy where it's like an image, yeah, on a computer screen that made me go, like, whoa. But could you imagine that right in your face? Just pew. That would be terrifying. Someone get on that. Now, I mean, if you don't have – or if you have uh, – what's – what am I thinking? Epilepsy. You probably couldn't play that you, game then. You because, probably shouldn't be using VR. Yeah, just exactly. To be but uh, like that is something that I look at and I go, "Oh my god, that would be amazing." Maybe not the ultimate custom night that they just came out with. That would be like information overload for your brain in VR. Yeah, that'd be but pretty cool. I'm like, why hasn't Scott done that yet? Why hasn't he done a VR version of FNAF? In part of me says to make more money, but I don't think. Uh, Scott's that worried about making money with FNAF. He's made enough of it with yeah. books and movies now and games for it. What, All that six of them, seven merch. of them, whatever, how many of them. God. Yeah, he has. I'm just trying to think of, like, you opened up horror, <laughs> and I'm like, nope, that totally well, works. To me, that was where VR started for me. Like, that's the base. Yeah? Of, like, immersing, like, because for me, the thing that's so great about VR is immersing yourself in a world. The only thing you have to get around in VR is the mechanics of it and how to work it. And for me, the best thing about horror and VR is you can kind of get around that mechanic of it by basically going back to the roots of we are going to let the environment do all the work. We're going to have you do as little interaction, like point-click interactions as possible Mm -hmm. And most of it is you walking around just being in the universe, having to do different things to progress in the game. So we're talking horror and all this stuff. And, I, and I've been thinking about this game. It took us a minute to figure out what it was. It's it's Welcome to the Game 2. Mm-hmm. It came out like earlier this year or last year. I forget. It's been a long April year. April 3rd, 2018. God, this year is so long. <laughs> um, so yeah, like it came out this year. And I think this would be an awesome candidate because... Not only are you, uh, you know, sitting at your desk, but you mm-hmm. also have to get up, you turn, you have like 18 different things are going on because the whole premise of the game is you are a hacker, but you're trying to track down someone. And to do this, you're going on the dark net. And to mm-hmm. do that, you're now at risk by being, you know, we're, I guess, weirded out by people, but like murderers, stalkers, assassins yeah. will come after you. The police are going to come after you if you don't change your hotspot, if you mm-hmm. don't change Wi Fi networks. If you don't set up things, you have to go downstairs every once in a while to do stuff, and people can ambush you, like yeah, stalkers. Like check the Wi-Fi and stuff. Uh, pick up packages that get dropped off by a drone. Like there are mm-hmm. so many things. You're just picking your nose over there. No, aren't you? I've got to. So for audio <laughs> you're just, listeners, you're just, no, 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 no. no. Just for, going to town for, over there for audio <laughs> listeners and for people on YouTube. Um, I had a zit uh, that was right on the crevice of the nose, yeah. like. Right where your base of the nose meets your skin, yeah, and it was bugging me, so I'm just picking that. Zip Sorry, a little like bit. it was the most. I yeah, could not no, talk I know, anymore. I know, and I'm looking at Dave like 
don't look at me as I pick this nasty, like, it's not even a zit anymore. It's just like the, it's like a scab now. Oh, uh, okay. And I know that's way TMI and people yeah, are looking gross. Yeah, that's That's what but, people come to us for. But I'd rather be doing that than fucking finger up the nose, going digging just, for gold. Just trying I'm to get through I'm not a Denver Nugget, Dave. Fair enough. Go ahead with the game. But yeah, I think that's a game because there is, like, you're, you are set in your ways as far as your movement's concerned. Like, mm-hmm. it's easy, it's relatively easy movement. It's not like high action stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's it's jump scare heavy. It, it's like well, you also, turn and you see a face in the window and you're like, oh fuck. If well, I if I go close to that window, he's gonna murder me. I'm just gonna look over here. And not just yeah, I'm that, not here, like, I'm not here. From some of the gameplay that I've seen of it where you open it up and have to watch like a video and it looks like an actual person. Yeah. Like seeing that in VR. Yeah, you're, you're looking at a computer screen and like it full screens mm-hmm. that in on you. And you lose context of the outside, but you hear noise. You hear yeah. you hear steps in a stairway, uh-huh. twenty feet away from you. You're like shit, is that the police? Mm-hmm. Do I need to do I need to pack everything? You turn off the Wi-Fi, close the laptop, turn it off, and then you go hide in the bathroom, mm-hmm. or do you hide in the closet? You know, d- based on who's coming and to murder doing you. Doing that in VR. Oh my god, that like their horror needs to take. Because then over you the could VR. get like a like headphones are probably the best. Oh for my that god, game. you could hear I, yes. side to side, Absolutely. but like with that whole VR experience of like. Okay, I heard something over there, oh, like, and actually yeah. getting that move. Yeah, I think we're a long way away from, like, action games being mm-hmm. good on VR. But, like, Beat Saber's fun. It's it's kind of that lightsaber gimmick, but now you're doing it to beats. Yeah. Like, that's fun. But horror. How does mm-hmm. how do horror games, like, how is this not the driving market for, mm-hmm. you know, VR? And that's one thing that I really wish that they would invest in. I, w- I wish somebody would, like, do a shitty port of, like, uh, FNAF mm-hmm. and just show them, be like, look... This is what or you like could do. Or like Five Nights at Candy's, one of those like rip off yeah. games, and just something, do it in VR. Something cheap and easy, and do it well. Because oh my god, the, the opportunities, <laughs> people, the opportunities. If you want to see that in VR, let us know. Down Dave's below. like, make VR great again. Make it great in the first place. <laughs> well, we've, was, we've been pretty. It, meh. Was, it was never great to begin we've with. I meh. forgot about that. Yeah, it was. It's okay. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I'm gonna go back to it. Yeah. The best thing about VR, in my opinion is the atmosphere is the whole thing about you've got to go into this atmosphere because that's what it's got to be like some of the vr games that i've liked is super hot's really good yep um sprint vector is not a bad one that's like a skiing one um but that one where it's not a ton of action right and it's not a lot of things to um learn Accounting Plus is the Rick and Morty, the one by Roland um, with Rick and Morty. And then there's one um, – oh, shoot. I got to click on this to see what the name of the actual game. Um, I Expect You to Die, which is basically – that one is your first person spy. And it's basically like one's like, oh, you're trapped in a car on an airplane. Right. You've got to like – stop all these traps from going off like gas in the car gas outside and complete the task and then it's like you'll die a lot but it's like oh okay i learned don't do that and it's exactly. that kind of a game exactly no i think that that's i just somebody needs to do it somebody take the chance <laughs> dave's like i i want good vr man i wish i knew i wish i was a game developer like i feel like we come up with some, a some dev? intriguing ideas dave wants to be a dev man i want to be a dev but i'm i'm not smart enough I need I need one of you smart people out there <laughs> to follow through on our ridiculous ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave, Dave, you're an yeah. ideas guy, man. You wow come up and with VR, great ideas, can we just man. combine them both? I don't, Could I don't, they even happen? Like, that'd be weird. Technically, you scroll in all the way. There you go. I mean, your first person, first person. Wow, is terrifying. To I play. hate it. You can't tell anything. Like the game doesn't. Uh huh. The game doesn't work in first person. So mm-hmm. no, Wow no. VR is not a thing. Don't try to make it a thing. <laughs> well, that's, that was stupid. Why? But like Call that? of Duty VR. Yeah. They've already, there's a game, I can't remember what it was, but I was um, watching the kind of funny guys after their E3 stuff. Mm -hmm. Or was it E3 or was it a convention earlier this year? I think it was E3 where basically, um, I remember Andy and Greg did it. It was, you went in there with a team and you actually like motioned everything. Like you actually threw a grenade Grenade, to throw a grenade and you actually had to like do the movements and everyone's like calling stuff out and it's like, okay, guy up there. And you actually have to like point the gun up with the right. headset on to do everything in the game. No, I mean, that's, 
there's so many ways you can go. Because mm-hmm. like there's even so with a game yeah. like that, all right, it's realistic. You don't get a mini map. No, it's true. It's you true. don't you don't get one because you don't get one in real life. Kind of a thing. That I thought is kind of cool. That would be a cool aspect of it. Is like a Call of Duty VR game first person. Potentially, that that could be really good. I mean, even like if you want to do something where it's a VR helmet, but maybe it's a controller designed for the game. Mm-hmm. I forget the name of the game, but remember there was that old like Mech Warrior game where you had a basically a, a full on like table size like controller for it because it was like I don't remember that. I'm trying to think of what it was called. Uh, it was basically it was Mech Warrior, but I want to say it was like Iron something. Mm-hmm. Iron. Something. I'm just typing Mech Warrior game into yeah. Basically, it was Mech Warrior Online. No, no, because that's the first thing I got. I know. <laughs> but basically, whatever it was, the controller for it was essentially like a cockpit. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you know what year it was? It's old. Oh, so like cockpit. Yeah, yeah. Because there's Hawken, there's War Robots, BattleTech came out this year. No, it, um, it, this is an oldie, a classic. Someone in the comments will let us know what it is because I don't want to stall this. Mech out too Assault, long. Mega Mech. None of those games. Um, Planet Side. It's old, 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 old. Yeah, that was like Iron Battalion or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I the you say old, old, and you say anything yeah, like Iron that. Yeah, Iron Battalion, Steel Battalion. That's what it Steel is. Steel Battalion. Because I was thinking the tanks game we used to play. Nope, Steel Battalion. Like, wasn't Steel Battalion has basically a full cockpit where it's a you have foot pedals underneath, three foot pedals. You have two joysticks. You've mm-hmm. got a set of controls in front of you. You have it mirror in to what you're Damn. doing. And then you've got the gameplay here, and what you see is uh, still you've got your like setup, like something like that. Maybe maybe we're maybe just, things should be geared more towards that. You know what that reminded me of though, and hmm. why I say that's a terrible idea because it's specific to one game. Well, no, not uh, there's that, but it's kind of like the yeah, you can play a racing game with a controller. Yeah, but remember when it's like I got to get the the wheel with the pedal so right. I can sit there. I did it for two seconds. I was like, all right, give me a fucking controller. Hydro Thunder was pretty bad. So I can play. No, not Hydro Thunder. Like Gran Turismo with oh, it. Or Gran like Turismo. the NASCAR game I had where you're actually like yeah. using the wheel. I'm like, all right, just give me a controller now because I'm done with this. Like that, like how many people are going to be like, man, I want to play this game. I got to get the entire hardware. I mean, to it, was, do it, it was like $200. Exactly. Uh, it was pretty baller, though. Exactly. Most people are going to go, no, that's way too much money for something I'm going to play once or twice. But you don't play it once and or twice. And then be done with you it. You keep playing it because it's good. <laughs> because they built out a quality piece no, of technology No, because for people it. be like, whatever, I am I played it for a half hour, I'm going to go back to Fork Knife now. Maybe this is how <laughs> we bring back the arcades. Maybe. Maybe you get, in, you know... These fully like they've got you know the obviously the ones mm-hmm. are like the big guns that you can take out and use yeah. for the arcade cabinets. Don't time crisis me, Dave. Yeah, maybe, Don't time maybe stuff like maybe VR and arcade. Me and you, can, me and you will own some this. fools in time crisis, Dave. VR arcade? Are we thinking that could be a thing? Maybe. Because you said the cost is a big thing. Uh huh. But if you go to an arcade, people are cycling in and mm-hmm. out. You make it a fun environment. VR arcade does exist. But Let remember, know. wipe down those headsets, we'll make man. It. You gotta wipe down yeah, those headsets. Well, yeah, you you. Here's the thing: like, you come in, yeah, you, you'd have to wipe them down. It's just like going to the gym. Yeah. Wipe down the machine, man. You gotta wipe that yeah, headset down. I don't want. I don't want that sweaty I don't, forehead. I don't want thing Dorito dust mine. on my fucking forehead. <laughs> exactly. Mount, that Mountain Dew and Dorito smell just, mm-hmm. especially whew. when it just seeps out of the skin, man. I think it's a and perfect. Start to sweat. I think that's a perfect way to end this episode. <laughs> Talk about World Dorito of Warcraft and Mountain Dew. Yep, absolutely. I remember one night, I think I told the story already on this you podcast. You drank a 12, a 12 pack? case of uh, Mountain Dew Code Red in one night playing World of Warcraft with my friend Matt and Did high you school. pee red that night? No. Wow. I fell asleep. I was so tired. I re- So this is the kind of uh, this is how guy we Matt was, was. So he was at my desk with his ter- his terabyte computer yep. that he would bring, he bring over. bring over a desktop. Yeah, I remember you telling me. And this. my laptop, I'm on the bed kind of laying on my stomach. I fell asleep while in an instance. So I was like playing an instance. You've done and that then to me too. You're a terrible person. I fell asleep on the yep. keyboard yep. and I woke up in the morning and he was just gone. He was just gone. And he my, just ghosted it. And I'm like, my, I'm like to my mom, like, do you know where Matt, Matt <laughs> went? And she's like, no, he wasn't here when I got up. 
He would like I found out that night. Yeah. He took his whole terabyte computer, which was not small. Yeah, it's a full desktop. Yeah. And just carried it a um, half a mile home. That's and walked home. He was a weird kid. At like four in the morning or was, three in the morning. He was a weird kid. Uh, but I love him. Love man. Man. I wish he would come love back and man. play with us. But it's like, wow, like you know, you could have just stayed the night, man. You could there was a couch right. It's not the be, same. I, I, I get he was going to go home and keep playing, to be exactly, honest. Exactly, probably. I but mean, yeah. you could have just kept playing here. World of Warcraft. No one's stopping you, Dave. We got stories for days. <laughs> if you want to hear more of it, let us know down below. Um, thank you for listening to episode five of Too Old to Game. Uh, only five episodes. I feel good about it. Only five. I, I feel good. I feel like it's been longer. It does feel a little bit longer. It feels like we've been talking to you guys about this stuff forever, mm-hmm. but it's just because we talk about it off camera all the time. Yeah. We're but, constantly talking about games. Absolutely. Uh, but again, just a final wrap up. If you do want to support us, you can check us out on Patreon. You can check us out on iTunes and five star that shit. You can go to our website, check out our merch, you know, see some awesome bios that we wrote, um, maybe some articles, a lot to do out there. But most, most importantly, you know, just give us some comments down below, give us some feedback and, uh, hit that sub button for us. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody.